The life of an entrepreneur is a roller coaster. It's full of ups and downs and highs and lows. Hopefully there's more highs than there are lows. But how do you work through those tough times when it looks like there's nothing happening? I'm Matthew Laske and I'm really pleased today to be joined by a special guest, David Savage. And we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into this topic and hear more about his thoughts on this topic and what our real unique selling point is. How the work we do is a reflection of who we are and how this can help us through these ups and downs times. So welcome, David. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Matthew. Looking forward to uh, talking today. Yeah, brilliant. It's, I was looking through your website a while ago and there's a really good uh, quote or a really, really good paragraph, which I thought would be useful to start off with. And it says, if you've spent any time in manufacturing, you'll have probably come across lean and the various initiatives to eliminate waste and the way we work. The manufacturing industry is beginning to wake up to another waste, the waste of unused human talent. So tell me a little bit more about sort of how this inspired you and was this the reason that you sort of started up your business in the first place? Yeah, very good, yeah. <clears throat> so um, I don't know how many of your guests will have specifically come from manufacture, but there's a, a waste elimination through time and motion and defects and eliminating that is, is quite a well recognized discipline they you know they have this um <clears throat> concept of tim wood you know and you're looking for the waste but there, there's a um a, a waste known as skills or human potential yeah. which is the one which is starting to get um more awareness and this is where you have someone who for example they uh, an operator comes to work and they do a task but you know in their own private life they're setting up mortgages they may be the treasurer of a local bowling club right. or they have their own hobbies and interests and, and all of that talent and resourcefulness can just sort of stay just outside the factory wall and so that is a waste because there's someone there who could be more entrepreneurial could bring more to the party could be more energized for what they're doing so in a nutshell that's the the waste which i i recognize is being um is being the one I'm choosing to focus on. And how do you bring that out is by having greater engagement of the, of the, the workforce. I think that's quite a good link. And I'm just looking at the, the logo there you've got in the, in the background of you, manufacturing with purpose. It's quite a good tie into how we can bring in the manufacturing and that, that lean and waste area into our everyday lives, not just you know, equipment and manufacturing environments. Yeah. Yeah, no, purpose is what makes, uh, is a driver, you know, Dan Pink, he talks about um, autonomy, mastery and, and purpose, you know, when, when yeah. someone has a purpose, it's like they're, you kind of see it in their eyes, they're on a mission. Right. And, and you know, we might not have that at all points of the day, but fundamentally there is deep down in all of us, like a real purpose or mission. And if you can tap into that and, you know, uh, entrepreneurs in, in that sense, they, they will have that kind of purpose thing which drives them, which ticks them. And when manufacturing, specifically the sector which I, I work in, if you can connect with what their kind of higher purpose is, you know, it's like the guy walking down the, the corridor in, uh, in, in um, you know, NASA and the janitors there and they, they say to him, what are you doing? He says, I'm putting a man on the moon. You know, that, that's what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not cleaning a toilet. I'm putting, putting a man on the moon. Um, right. And that kind of uh, li lifts, lifts up your focus, makes you more purposeful. And then you'll drive through barriers, which other people can just talk about as, as excuses for not doing stuff. Um, someone who has purpose will push through those barriers and the red tape and they'll they'll get stuff done. Well, that's actually a good point. One of, one of the tips I always give to the apprentices that I teach is whenever you're walking around the factory or the, the rooms and that, don't always, you know, don't walk around with your hands in your pockets, but always carry a piece of paper or a clipboard in your hands because it looks like you've got a purpose as to where you're going. You're not just wandering around to fill in time. So, so never, yeah, yeah. never look like you're just meandering. The um yeah yeah so, I'm, I'm sure people can can you know, can perfect the art of looking busy, but yeah. I I I do this um 
survey on different people and ask them, how do you know if someone is like being productive? And it's amazing how many manufacturing managers, they pick that up from the speed people walk from A to B. Okay. There's something about, there's something when you know someone is actually trying to get something done, they, they kind of walk a little bit more purposefully so yeah. you can see that in the body language. And like you say, if you're there with a piece of paper and pen, you're there to like suck, suck up knowledge and, and, and absorb more. So yeah, I agree. I'm a slow walker, so I might have to pick up my paper and <laughs> look, look busier. Sorry, you just froze a bit. I was just, just waiting. You said you're a slow walker and then you stopped. Oh, right. No, you, you froze. So I paused because it was, there was nothing said. Saying that I'm a slow walker, so I might have to speed up my pace so I look <laughs> busy more often. So, so the, the part we started with was the, I suppose, the entrepreneurial roller coaster. And yeah, it's been a pretty tough 12 months for, I, I would say, just about everybody. And I think that sometimes makes it harder is that we see all of these posts on LinkedIn and Facebook and things about how well I'm doing and how our companies just won these contracts and how everything's really picking up and, you know, life's great. And then everybody else is watching that maybe getting a little bit dejected because, well, that's not me. That's not happening to me. How have you found it sort of over this time? And, you know, you speak to a lot of people and coach a lot of people. How have you found it yourself and also through the other people are they still finding it tough? Yeah, no, it, it has been a really tough time, you know, and, and people's experiences vary massively. Um, but what I what I have seen and what I've noticed myself is um, our, our life, our kind of routine has been quite profoundly changed. Okay. Um, and so just little things like the physical, you know, if you're more of an extrovert personality type, and you're not having that kind of sense of people around you, that that can affect you more. You know, you can feel a bit kind of energyless, um, and perhaps spending a long time, you know, you and the laptop and <laughs> the room and so on. Again, you know, you're perhaps not getting that um, you know rejuvenation of your you know, your social interaction, which kind of gives you new ideas and, and brings colour. Yeah. You know? so, but that's definitely one thing. And, and the fact that just the, you know, the market has, has been paused. You know, there's many companies which are, you know, they're not looking, they're trying to, they're in survival mode. They're, they're working, you know, spending a lot of time working out furlough schemes and keeping people safe. You know, their attention is perhaps not on growing and investing and, and, you know, and if you're part of that supply chain, you know, there is, it, it, it's, they're happy to talk, but they're perhaps not happy to, you know invest yeah so, yeah and that and that you can take that kind of perhaps personally like you're doing something wrong you know and, and and maybe you're not it's just they're not really to buy yeah and it's very easy when you're sitting by yourself to get caught up in i need to do more work to do better so you put your head down and you're, you're busy away doing work and things and you're not talking to other people and then as i said you're seeing all these positive posts and success stories of other people doing things so then you've got to work harder and it really affects that work-life balance, doesn't it? Where the more you see other people do it, the more you work harder to do it, the worse it is because you're not then connecting with other people. So how do we make sure that we, we get that energy up and, you know, try not to not get caught into that cycle? Have you got any ways? Yeah, that... I mean, it's, it's a great, great question, Matthew. And I sort of see it's like being above the line and, and below the line. Okay. Magic line, you know, and below the line, the world is scary and is, <laughs> is, is a place of threat and everyone's there to, to kind of screw you and so on. And, and um, you haven't got the resources and above the line, you know, the, the world is full of possibilities and, and, right. and, and opportunities and abundance and, you know, um, you know, synergies and so on. And it's like, no matter how, um, no matter how much work you do below the line, it just doesn't seem to get the magic to really attract customers or for you to feel feel good about what you're doing. Yep. You know, so, so getting the right mindset, the right approach um, is not a work thing. You can't work yourself to that. You know, you okay. have to create the, the space in your calendar to 
to, to reconnect with what you're actually trying to do, to get in the right mindset, to, um, you know, to refresh what you're doing. Um, and, and that is not a, necessarily a doing activity. So it seems completely counterintuitive. You know, you want to work, work, work. And perhaps what you need to do is to stop. You know, it's slowing down to speed up, it's taking some time to refresh. And that's, you know, essentially that is what I do as a, a coach is create that space in people's calendar right. where they can actually just breathe and just and to slow down a bit, um, see the bigger picture. You know, you're, you, know you're, you have a roof over your head, you have lots of good things to be grateful for. It's not so bad. You have, you know, this has gone well. And remind yourself of all that positive stuff, um, because you know we, we we easily forget that. When, especially when you've had a disappointment, you can start beating yourself up about stuff which you, you really shouldn't do. Yeah, it's very easy to get caught into that mindset, isn't it? And it's counterintuitive, I guess, to say I need to stop so that I can actually do better. You know, when it comes to five o'clock. Don't keep, you know, don't go and have dinner and then come back to your computer just because there's nothing else to do and keep working. I think we've all been caught up and <laughs> probably still am, but, you know, you think, oh, well, I'm not doing anything else. I may as well keep working because that's only going to help me. But like you said, you can just burn out and everything then ends up downwards, doesn't it? Absolutely. The social media and LinkedIn yep. is it's a very fickle friend. You know, it's, uh, it is. I, I often use this expression of Roger Kipling says, if you can, if you can meet disaster and triumph and, and treat those two imposters as one of the same, <laughs> then you'll be a man, my son. And I, and I would say that, you know, it's like, if sometimes you, you can put a post out there and you think, oh, you know, no one comments and I'm just a, a forgotten dot of the universe. And, and it's just not true. You know, it's like, how many times have you um, just completely zoned out from social media, need to get away? That's exactly the same as everyone else out there. The fact that they don't comment doesn't mean anything really. Um, and, and, you know, of course you're trying to, that is a way of, of putting your message out there. But, you know, it's the real friends you have. And business is actually done with people who, who you know, who know, like, and trust you. They're, they're yeah. your real networks. And those are the people who you who are always there, they're not, they're not disappearing, and they will be your ambassadors. So it's just to keep this kind of healthy, healthy uh, distance, if you like, from that, that fickle friend of, of the social media, and know who really is the important people in your life who will, who will actually support you through those times. Yeah, that's true. It's the real connections, and it's a, people have lost a lot of that, and it's about forcing yourself sometimes to get out of the, the monotony of doing hard work and even just take some time off for those friends. I think it uh, reminded me, we spoke previously, and one of the things you mentioned there was you said that the work we do is a reflection of who we are. So do you want to maybe just expand on, on that comment a little bit? Because I think it's quite an interesting way of looking at the work that we do isn't necessarily who we are, or making lots of money doesn't make us a success. Yeah, well, that's... It's quite a challenging statement because we often, um, you know, you think it's all about messaging and, and your pitch and so on. But, you know, I, I, I think if you, what people will pick up, people pick up the subliminal messages, what you're giving out. Right. And for example, this one, you know, when you're perhaps finding it hard and you, you really, really want to make a sell, that, that is the biggest turn off. For people it's, it's a desperate seller it just it okay. just something in them which will say this is not going to go anywhere where someone who comes with a, a genuine giving supportive positive i'm loving what i'm doing is a fantastic advertising board so uh, think about what's at the heart of your company um you know, it, what, what is it I'm trying to give out? What is the company brand? What's the company culture? Even if you're a one man band, that is important. So I have, I have on my, on my um, wall, I have my own policy, company policy around right. respect of the workforce, around, around um, the, the customer mindedness of, of the organization around how how the uh, you know how we believe in what we're doing 
Yeah. And, and that this is really going to add value and we, we live and breathe it because um, I need to remind myself of that sometimes when it can get, um, uh, you know, you, you're given lots of advice about what it takes to, to, to run a successful business. But fundamentally, you, you can forget the fact that the real spark of the company will be you, it will be yep. your uh, personal passion for what you're doing. So to make sure you, you live and breathe that, um, uh, that is also what your customers want to invest in as well. It is. I think it's a really good point that it's if you can see that passion in other people, you're going to maybe want to do business more with them because you think, well, if they're loving what they're doing, it must be good. Yeah. Um, if we're, if we're talking about engineers and manufacturing, I guess that's the hard, the part a lot of them find hard, isn't it? About how do they show that love and that passion and that without being too technical based or, you know, focusing on the competency side, how they get back to the warmth side and that connection part. Do you find that uh, when you're talking to a lot of the businesses and people you're dealing with that some of the, the things that they want to talk about is how can they um, so how can they build that relationship with other people? Do you think it's, it's a hard thing for them to do? Yeah, so in terms of like, so you know being passionate about what you're doing, you know I, I don't that, that doesn't mean that you you fill the conversation up and, and pouring it out. This is what I do and I love it and, and listen to me. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's sometimes not said with words. You know, it's the way. Right. You know, for, for example, for me and my business, every every conversation you know should be the DNA running through it should be about. A purpose you know even if we have a, a five minute conversation like this conversation with you now what is the purpose what do i and i'm thinking you know what is it that the uh what will make the best impact on 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 the audience now is if i'm genuine if i'm myself if i'm real you know that's and i'm conscious about that you know you're conscious about every interaction you have with the customer how is this giving that service that branding which i want um, which is also the way we listen, the way we engage. You know, you say we are we are here to make you succeed. Well, then you really need to understand what is success for them, what and and be curious about what does success look like for your organisation, because that's you know your success story will be my my case study of the future. Yeah, and that's it. Focus on the success rather than the things that haven't gone so well, the things we can't control. Maybe because that's what sort of sucks us down to that below the line that you mentioned where we're getting out of that. And, you know, I always say celebrate even the small wins. You know, I was speaking to somebody the other day and they, they got a job for, for the first time in a while. And it was like, oh, well, it's good, but, you know, I don't want to get too too excited yet because I'll wait till I've been into the job for a while and make sure it's okay. And it's like, absolutely get excited. You know, this is a massive thing to get a job at the moment and celebrate that and if it doesn't turn out later then you know, work with there's that a, later but there's a great um uh book called the score takes care of itself and it's right. talking about the sports psychology so you can look at the uh, the end result you know the two one the win whatever it was but in fact the the, the champion's mindset is about winning every sport is about winning the tackle is about showing up best and preparing my kit. Is about training the best, the champion mindset around training, and then the score takes care of itself. And I think that's that is really key for entrepreneurs. Is you you measure the success of today not by the harvest you get, but by the seeds you sowed. And that is exactly what you said there. By the what was in your circle of control, I've done that. I've I've sowed away, and I'm gonna and that is. To celebrate so and sometimes we need to create those micro goals you know i'm going to call 10 10 people today you know if they all say no great I, I, that doesn't matter the point is i'm going to celebrate that i actually picked up the phone he did it and, I called them. and 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 that's great and then if you do that the school will take care of itself i like that idea because it's Again, people are going to get caught up in the numbers of rejections they got or the, the conversion rate. You know, if they get two out of 10, then they're happy. But why not just say, I spoke to 10 people today. I got really good information, really good feedback. If none of them wanted it, 
is it due to my price is it due to what i'm offering is it due to the way i sold it and then maybe focus on that to come back 100 percent. yeah no that the our mindset around um you know making mistakes and and there's a lot of you know you talked about it's been a tough time it can be a time when you can get paralyzed right so you know, when you go below the line, if you, you're sitting there and you're you're you, you're wanting to do stuff, you, you know you need to do stuff, but you're kind of paralyzing because whichever route you take, you it could go wrong, it could fail. Okay. So I could write this article and no one could read it, or I could be unable to finish it, and, and I could call that person, but they're they're really busy and they probably won't answer the phone, and, and I and I could write this email, but probably an email isn't the best approach and before you know it, you're just not doing anything and I, and then that's what I'd say is to just take a step back and say look I'm not going to try and succeed in any of this but I'm going to just go through the action I'm going to I'm going to um, complete the the, the the sewing activity and and regardless of the results and if for nothing else I'm going to learn something I'll learn that emailing's not working or blogging's not working or calling's not working, but at least I'll learn something. And that's what, what, uh, another great expression while we're on expressions is um, businesses fail for two reasons. One, you don't take business seriously. And the other two is you take yourself too seriously. <laughs> And I think that I think that's there's a lot of wisdom in that. It's like when you're if you're so afraid of the learning experiencing, you, right. you know, learning is messy, is things go wrong, something like that. But if you're if you if you're going to be afraid of that, you're just not going to move. You're going to end up stalling. So even if you can create some kind of fun around that, and the way I, you know, my own thing is. I think if I don't succeed in this, it will make a great story to tell my mates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if you always... go wrong, spectacularly. And even if, even to be honest, going into business, you, you know, lots of small businesses fail. But I can tell you what, those people have learned more than all the people who stood on the sidelines and had all the right theory and, and know all the reasons why business failed, but don't actually get off their ass and do anything. So I would say, you know, celebrate the the fact that you've got a chance to develop a business you'll learn so much along the way and opportunities um uh you know follow motion you know don't if you don't do anything you won't find opportunities so maybe this the customer you speak to has no interest but they might net point you in the direction of someone else and, and you'll only find that out by actually taking that first step yeah, it may, may be not the best example or person to talk about, but Trump, I think he went bankrupt like two or three times before he actually got to where he ended up getting to. And, you know, th through that determination and that <laughs> stubbornness just to keep on going. So I think that before you were mentioning too about um, focusing on the little things and focusing on what you're doing rather than the score and Elon Musk, uh, talks a little bit about that. He says that he doesn't care about the numbers. He doesn't care about the finance and the profits and things. All he cares about is that he's making a good product and something that people want, and then, then the money will take care of itself. So he doesn't even get involved in or really focus that much on the money. And I suppose if you look at his share prices, even over the last couple of weeks, you're probably just as well he's not focusing on the money because one morning you'll be having a party and the next morning you'll be bankrupt feeling. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, uh, I'm sure someone is focusing on Martin, you know, it, maybe he's appointed someone to do that. But the, the, what I like about that is, and you see it again and again, it, it, it is the the purpose of the organisation, which is really what is the, the game changer, you know, uh, and I think that being clear on that, I mean, you know, the, the number of leaders in, in, and MDs in manufacturing companies, when you boil down to it, you ask them what their legacy is, you know, it's that we did some seriously cool stuff. We, we, gave, um, we gave work to people, you know, we created yep. opportunities. It's like uh, the word, the profit is a way of getting there. The, the profit, uh, you know, fuels their mission. And that's what I think that, 
that is true at all actually at all levels of the business even when you, you're really you know one man band same thing it's like your your mission will uh, must stay you know your primary you must protect that you know what focus, you're trying to yeah. protect that and and protect profit as well i completely would say that you need to um be serious about business it doesn't work it's not a charity you know you need money to be able to continue doing what you're doing um so and that helps you it gives you a good good tension so that you make sure you're um really genuinely successful and not you're not just talking the the, the bubble if you like yeah and if, if you are in that entrepreneur sort of environment, and particularly if it's just you or, or one or two others, maybe, and things aren't feeling like they're going so great, and you start off on a Monday morning, perhaps, how do you start off the week? I'm going to spring this one on you. How would you start off the week to motivate and energize yourself to get ready for another week, another battle, as it might be? Are there any anything that you do in particular that to try to get you up and going that might be a bit more difficult some days i think there is there uh, this i'm not saying this is the only thing but i'm gonna say it because i you know i have my own coach and i am a coach but i have in, in that sense i i have outsourced my motivation my my accountability or motivation i've outsourced it so i'm paying for a coach i now i'm gonna have a sit down with him and uh, every two weeks you know so if i really get way below the line i know i've got that session yeah. to remind you know what we're about what our values are what we stand for um what is the kind of limiting beliefs which you kind of are kind of telling yourself and you that session will he'll, he'll get it out of me you know um so i'd say you know I, I have a coach to keep me on the track i also and this is the great thing which manufacturing has taught me about systems so it's, it's that thing, when you find a, willing, a, a winning formula for your day, make it, you know, rinse and repeat it. So okay. I have, I, on Monday mornings, I have a, my first calendar appointment is do a, a 10K run, you know, as a calendar appointment. And I have a friend who can join me on that run. So there's the accountability. So when I really yep. feel like it, that little bit of extra accountability is good for me because you, you don't let, you don't let down your friends, you know. So that's my that's my Monday morning ritual. You know, I have a 10k run. You know, don't look at your emails. Um, get out there. Get get the right mindset. And then this, this um, you know, that's uh, yeah. I'd, so, I'd recommend that. But I think everyone has got their own style. So I'm not saying that's the only. Yeah, only way maybe not 10k for everyone. That might be a, a tougher morning to start off on a Monday for some people than actually facing their emails. <laughs> No, find, yeah. find what works for you and that's the yeah, thing you know. exactly find, find different things i mean i think you did a, a podcast recently and you listed a whole load of things from yoga and meditation and um you know go for a walk or read read a chapter of your of an inspiring book listen to a podcast or yeah you know, those are great rituals you know that great that's, rituals. that's it so there's there's i think two things there just that, that you mentioned one is to have a goal or something to keep you accountable so you mentioned having a coach every two weeks to keep you on track and if you sort of veer too far off in that two weeks you you can kind of get back aligned but also having that goal of well every monday morning or a couple of times a week you go for a run by locking that in with somebody else it's almost forcing you to you don't want to let that person down it's easy enough to let yourself down and go well i just can't be bothered when doing it today but Sometimes if you feel like you're letting someone else down, you're more inclined to do it. So having a meeting or having a person that you do something with is a really good way to keep yourself accountable if you lack that motivation and drive sometimes. Yeah, yeah that's and, that's, and that's where you need to look out in that sense, look out for yourself, if you're self-employed, you know, self um, uh, you know, you need to create, look after, you know, treat yourself as you would your employee. Yeah. You would, pick up on that if your energy's low you know, let's have a chat you know let's not just carry on it's not working let's have a chat um and and it also goes to show how how much license there is in the in the bigger corporate it, you um you can perhaps get away with being a bit of a half asleep half half a monday when you're running your own company you cannot afford to let that time run away you've got to be hitting that first conversation the first thing you've got booked in 
you want to be giving out the, the the vibes of the company you know so you so it's very important to sharpen sharpen the saw that's one of Kobe's um seven habits is sharpen the saw okay so and just keep hacking away with the, with the blunt <laughs> saw. spend a bit of time sharpen it and then you'll be able to cut through the same problems much more effectively yeah. So, so you think, well, I, I haven't got time to go for a run. I've got so much work on. I just can't. I, I would really challenge that mentality because, boy, if you if you're in the right mindset, you'll get through that list, that to do list, or you might just chop stuff right out of it completely when you're thinking. Straight. And that's coming back to that waste, isn't it, from the lean concepts and you know all of those work back from the 70s, 80s, and things about eliminating anything waste we do, if the yeah. If the task that you're doing, if you're working throughout the week on a business, you know, business related work and the task that you're not doing doesn't relate to the purpose of your business or the purpose of getting to some other point, then why are you actually doing it in the first place? You're now not doing it for the business. You're doing it because you either want to do it or you've been sidetracked and, and chop it out. So that's a quite a good way to look at it, that focus on some areas that are also not just to energize and motivate us, but also what are the things that are bringing us down as well? Yeah. Those wasteful things, those, you know, looking up, I think everyone's sat on social media at points over the last year and just, you're just going through the posts and things and you, you look 20 minutes later, half an hour later and you go, what have I just done for half an hour? I didn't even look at anything interesting, useful. I didn't even like it. Yeah, I've just spent all that time. No, I, I, my, my top tip on that one is to, you know, swallow, swallow your frog first, you know, make sure you've done the, the, the busyness is a form of procrastination. So, so I'm, re I, I'm really, really busy doing all this and that. And it's because you don't want to do the thing you really should do. So, it, and particularly perhaps for us engineering, I, I am, you know, I did engineering, you know, mechanical engineering and stuff. So I, I, I totally get the, the mindset, which is, um, you know, the, the sale, the selling side of the business just, just doesn't come that naturally. Yeah. And where I'd say is like, if, if that is the case, you know, get, get that over and done with first, you know, ring fence it, get it done and then dive into your technician mode. Absolutely. So, so, you know, you stop doing business development at your peril. You know, you, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's easy or not. You need to do it. You might be firing off a few emails or, or whatever you need to do. Get it done. And then, you know, other things sort of fall into place during the day. Uh, and then, you you know, you won't, um, have, you know, like I say, whittled away that precious time where you really needed to be out there. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it because, like we said, it's innovation and, the doing and the operations part of it. And then there's the marketing and the, the business development part. And you need both of those for a successful business. And especially when, like you said, talking to lots of engineering, technical based people, they're very much about innovation solution, um, making up that part of it rather than the marketing. And I think some of that does come down to the motivation and the energy part, because you know we're good at the technical side, perhaps not so good at the other side. So. It's a good way to get it done first. <laughs> Pull off the band-aid, as they say. Yeah. Now the the E myth is a, is a, some good reference. So it has these three characters, all of which are buzzing around your head at different times. You know, the entrepreneur, the 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 manager, and the technician. And if you've come, you know, if your thing is, you know, um, is uh, you know, stress, stress modeling or, you know, computer, computation fluid dynamics or something. If that's your, if that's your technical, technical bias, you, you're going to naturally get pulled into that and you need to give space for the entrepreneur and the manager, the manager who looks at the system, looks at things as a system and, and makes, makes things, you know, run in a, um, in a sustainable way. And the entrepreneur who's thinking, how do we get this, this message out there? How do we, bring in you know track customers and so on and you've got to, it's a different times you're going to have to put a different completely different hat on to your bias but just not being aware of that is a great thing because you know you know i need to be more mindful now of which hat i've got on what's yep. the energy i need now um and also if that's your 
I would say that if that's your comfort zone, you know, do it. Absolutely. Find time for it. Do it without any sort of um, apologies. Do your thing. Do it well. But make sure you've also carved out a bit of time for the other stuff as well. Because if you if you never do what you're what's in your comfort zone, that's also going to make you feel pretty frazzled after a while. Yeah, I think that's quite a good way to, to sort of finish off the, the, the topic there. Of, we started off talking about um, the ups and downs of the entrepreneur's journey and how we get some energy and how we sort of motivate ourselves. We've also talked about um, the unique selling point is being yourself. So it's one thing to motivate yourself and get yourself energy and having goals to work at and celebrate micro wins and you know, having someone to keep you accountable. But if you're not being yourself, all of that's kind of for nothing, isn't it? And eventually you will run out of energy if you're not being yourself. So it's quite a, quite a good way to, to, to round out that conversation is be yourself, show that this is what you're passionate about, show that this is what you're good at, and other people will then automatically follow you and, and come and want to be on board. No, it's really, thank you very much, Beth. It's been a really uh, fascinating conversation. And, and, uh, and I think, um, you know, thanks for what you've done in this space to help people in their, this part of their journey, because we definitely need help, help, you know, people around us who can support us and, make, you know, bring awareness to what's going on in our heads. So, you know, you, you've been a real pioneer with that. So, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for your support as well. Oh, no problem. It's always good to to speak to other people who mix with a lot of other people themselves. And, you know, it's good. Thank you for sharing your thoughts yourself as well as, as what you've learned from talking to other people. So it's been a, a roundabout few topics. We've covered quite a wide range of things, but thank you very much for your time. And if anybody listening wants to speak to David more about any of the topics, uh, it's David Savage Coaching. David, do you want to maybe give your, your website a plug? Yeah. Yeah, find me on find me on LinkedIn, David Savage. My my web domain is um, david savagecom So brilliant, and so great logo and uh, <laughs> manufacturing with purpose is is a a good way to look at it, both in business and personally. So thanks very much, David, and see you all again soon next time.